So clinical symptoms, how they present usually is a painful crisis, especially during childhood. Somebody people having a severe, you know, joint pains or a small fingers or toes pain. This is called dactylitis. That means these sickle blood cells are gone into a small blood vessels and they blocked up the circulation. That's where people get severe pains. So if they're getting severe pains with no cause, one should do a blood test. That is a simple blood test called a CBC, where you look at the hemoglobin uh, parameters and also a test called a hemoglobin electrophoresis, where you're looking at the type of hemoglobins. Normally in an adult, you will have a hemoglobin A. There is a small percentage of A2 and a fetal hemoglobin, but you do not have any hemoglobin S, that is sickle hemoglobin. But somebody who is a carrier in that particular blood test, you will see hemoglobin S levels about 20%, 30%. But if you're seeing hemoglobin S levels more than 60% or 50%, they got to be a sickle cell disease and they may have a clinical symptoms. Generally, sickle cell with a 30%, 20%, you do not have any symptoms. That is what is a trait. When you have a higher numbers, then you have a tendency for the blood vessels to be blocked. So you will have a severe pains in the joints or what we call as a chest crisis, it's called a painful crisis where people have an acute episodes of pain. And these pain can range from a very minor where you can just settle with a paracetamol to a very severe where you're needing higher painkillers like diclofenac, you know, hyphenac and uh, tramadol or, you know, admission to settle it. To a severe extent, you may need a morphine injections. Luckily, in Indian, whatever we have seen, they're not that severe painful types. What you would see in sub-Saharan sub -Saharan Africa and a lot of sickle patients you see in UK who have come from Africa, sometimes they get admitted to have a high doses of morphine. And we don't see that phenomenon much in India. People have got a painful crisis, but manageable most of the time as an outpatient with painkillers. So we're in one way, we are a little bit lucky that we do not have that subtype of a severe painful crisis. But we also have System, symptoms like anemia, like drop in hemoglobin. Sometimes they break the hemoglobin because these cells are altered in shape. So they break off and they cause a bit of jaundice though. They always have a little bit of a raised bilirubin in the blood test and they have a low hemoglobin. But generally they're not transfusion dependent unless you've got associated thalassemia. And people may have a little bit of a spleen if they have associated thalassemia but generally they don't have a spleen. So painful crisis is the biggest thing. And the second common thing is uh, like uh, people can have anemia, needing blood transfusions, jaundice. But on a long term, if you see an adult, sometimes they come with the bone pains, you know, joint has got been damaged. Like somebody in 30s, 20s, teenagers, you're coming with some hip pains. It is called avascular necrosis of hip because of these small blood vessels being blocked in an area of blood vessels in the hip. They get a damage to the joints and some people go on joint replacements and there is a new therapies for the cartilage repair, you know, regrow. There are a lot of other things. So and also one thing they should look at a kidney damage, uh, look at a protein loss in the urine, especially in 40s for a sickle. But a younger patients start looking at how to control their pain and things. <music>